Hello, we are going to look at Romeo and Juliet, Act 1, Scene 2 today. I will be uh, following along with the text as well as periodically stopping to ask questions and to offer insight. So, Act 1, Scene 2, here we go. Scene 2, A Street. Enter Capulet, Paris, and Servant. But Montague is bound as well as I, in penalty alike. It is not hard, I think, for men so old as we to keep the peace. Of honourable reckoning are you both, and pity tis you lived at odds so long. But now, my lord, what say you to my suit? But saying all what I have said before, my child is yet a stranger in the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Let two more summers wither in their pride. There we may think her right to be a bride. Younger than she are happy mothers made. And too soon marred are those so early made. The earth hath swallowed all my hopes but she. She is the hopeful lady of my earth. But woo her gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part, And she agree, within her scope of choice Lies my consent and fair recording voice. This night I hold an old accustomed feast, whereto I have invited many a guest, such as I love, and you among the store, one more, most welcome, makes my number more. At my poor house look to behold this night earth-treading stars that make dark heaven light, such comfort as do lusty young men feel when well-apparelled April on the heel of limping winter treads. Even such delight among fresh female buds shall you this night inherit at my house. Hear all, all see, and like her most whose merit most shall be. Which among view of many, mine, being one, may stand in number, though in reckoning not. Come, go with me. Go, Sarah, trudge about through fair Verona. Find those persons out whose names are written there gives a paper, and to them say, My house and welcome on their pleasure stay. Ex Before Capulet and Paris exit, let's go ahead and look at what we just read. If you haven't caught the drift yet, Paris is asking Lord Capulet if he can marry his daughter Juliet. Now Capulet says, My child is yet a stranger in the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Let two more summers wither in their pride, ere we may think her ripe to be a bride. This is an important line because it shows, first off, Juliet's age. She has not seen the change of 14 years yet, so we know that she's only 13 years old. Secondly, he thinks that Juliet should wait at least two more summers or two more years before she becomes uh, a bride. And Paris counters by saying, well, younger than she are happy mothers made. Imagine during this time period being a woman and you had to give... Um, you know, get married and have babies before the age of 14. That would be pretty, uh, I think, difficult lifestyle. Uh, and Capulet, I think, is really sensible because he says, and too soon martyr, though so early made. He recognizes that if he were to marry off his daughter too soon, that she would probably not be happy. Um, you can also see in the next line, it says, the earth has swallowed all my hopes but she. This signifies that any other children that he's had have passed on and um, are, you know, dead and buried at this point, which is really sad, but probably realistic to the time period because, you know, infant mortality was high and child death was high. A lot of people didn't make it to adulthood just because of, you know, different illnesses and lack of, you know, good medicine at the time. Um, he does concede a little bit to Paris because he says... Uh, she is the hopeful lady of my earth, but woo her, gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but part, and she agree within her scope of choice lies my consent and fair according voice. Basically, that what this means is that if Julia does agree to marry Paris, he'll let it happen. And he says woo her, meaning, you know, romance her, try to get her to love you. And if she agrees, then uh, you can marry her. If you look at the remainder of his long speech here, otherwise known as a monologue, you can see that he kind of talks about he's having a party tonight and Paris should go and look at all the other 
fresh female buds of the night, meaning that there's going to be all these other beauties, and um, see if there's somebody else you might like too. He gives a paper to his servant, and he says, go throughout Verona and invite all these people who are on this list. So that is where we left off. Let's go ahead and hear what the servant is called. He's also, uh, if your text says Peter, he's been called Peter before too. So it might say servant, it might say Peter. Um, they're the same person here. All right, let's continue. St. Capulet and Paris. Find them out whose names are written here. It is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard, and the tailor with his last, the fisher with his pencil, and the painter with his nets. But I am sent to find those persons whose names are here writ, and can never find what names the writing person hath here writ. I must to the learned in good time. Enter Benvolio and Romeo. Tut, man! One fire burns out another's burning. One pain is lessened by another's anguish. Turn giddy and be holp by backward turning. One desperate grief cures with another's languish. Take thou some new infection to thy eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Your plantain leaf is excellent for that. For what, I pray thee? For your broken shin. Why, Romeo, art thou mad? Not mad, but bound more than a madman is, shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped and tormented, and... God den, good fellow. God gear good den. I pray, sir, can you read? Aye, mine own fortune in my misery. Perhaps you have learned it without book. But, I pray, can you read anything you see? Aye, if I know the letters and the language. You say honestly, rest you merry. Stay, fellow. I can read. Reads. Signor Martino and his wife and daughters. County Anselmo and his beauteous sisters. The lady widow of the Truvio. Signor Placencio and his lovely nieces. Mercutio and his brother Valentine. My uncle Capulet, his wife and daughters, my fair niece Rosaline, Livia, Signor Valencio, and his cousin Tybalt, Lucio, and the lively Helena, a fair assembly. Gives back the paper. Whither should they come? Up. Whither? To supper. To our house. Whose house? My master's. Indeed. I should have asked you that before. Now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great rich Capulet. And if you be not of the house of Montagues, I pray, come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you, Mary. Exit. At this same ancient feast of Capulets sups the fair Rosaline whom thou so lovest, with all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither, and with unattainted eye compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. When the devout religion of mine eye maintains such falsehood, then turn tears to fires. And these, who often drown, could never die, Transparent heretics be burnt for liars. One fairer than my love, The all-seeing sun, Ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. Tut, you saw her fair, none else being by, Herself poised with herself in either eye. But in that crystal scales let there be weighed Your lady's love against some other maid, That I will show you shining at this feast, And she shall scant show well that now shows best. I'll go along, no such sight to be shown, But to rejoice in splendour of my own. Exit. Scene three. Okay, before we go on to scene three, let's talk about what we just read. So, if we go up a little bit, we see that the servant is uh, is speaking to himself saying, I gotta go find somebody who can read, because he's illiterate. Okay, um, somebody who can read the writings on this invitation. And he goes out into the town, and lo and behold, who does he run into? Benvolio and Romeo. Very convenient here. And they just talk here back and forth a little bit, and... Romeo, in true Romeo fashion, you see him say here, Not mad, but bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped and tormented. And, and then he's going to keep going, and then he sees this guy come up, the servant, or Peter. And Romeo is again complaining about how in love he is, and he's just so brokenhearted, and he can't move on, and he's just so miserable. But he does eventually help uh, the servant read the invitation, as you can see here. 
and these lines. And he realizes that certain people are going to be there that he might be interested in seeing. The servant says, thank you. And he also says, if you're not of the house of Montague, I pray, come cup, come and crush a cup of wine. Meaning, if you're not a Montague, you're welcome to come and party. Well, hmm, what do you think might happen? It's likely that uh, if two young boys hear about a cool party that's happening on the other side of town, but they're not invited, they still might want to go. So, Romeo and Benvolio are interested. Benvolio says, come and with all the admired beauties of Veroni, with an unattainted eye, uh, compare the face of your love with uh, some that I shall show, and I will make you think thy swan a crow. Basically meaning, if you come see this girl then uh, that you're so in love with, you can compare her to everybody else, and you'll see that there's more beautiful women than her. I'll take a moment here to mention that every, you know, declaration of love that's been made in this uh, play thus far is based off of looks. So I urge you to consider, is Romeo in love or in lust? Does he lust for this girl or does he love her? And can you love someone based on looks alone? Uh, Romeo, of course, whenever Benvolio says, oh, you know, this girl is not as beautiful as you think, he thinks, Oh, you're crazy. He says, one fairer than my love, the all-seeing sun, ne'er saw her match since the world begun. So he's basically saying that this girl that he's in love with is the most beautiful girl that has ever walked the entire earth and all of time. So Benvolio says, okay, okay, we'll see. Romeo agrees to go along, but he says, no sights to be shown, but I'll rejoice in the splendor of mine own. We know that there is a girl here that he's in love with, and um, we know here that Benvolio mentioned the girl's name, Rosaline, so we know that the girl that he's in love with is Rosaline, and a lot of my students are always surprised to hear this because they assume that the girl that he's so madly, deeply in love with is Juliet. No, he has not met Juliet yet. This is Rosaline, and he's going to crash this party because he wants to, you know, admire her, and Benvolio wants him to crash the party because he wants... Um, Romeo to see that, you know, Rosaline's uh, not the most beautiful girl in the world, and there's probably other girls to fall in love with. So with that said, let's just kind of recap what is happening in this scene. Just give me a moment. Okay, so in the summary, we see here that Act 1, Scene 2, Peter looks for someone who can read and finds Romeo and Benvolio. Again, Peter is a name sometimes given for the servant in this scene. Romeo reads the party invitation. Ro Romeo realizes Rosaline is going and decides he wants to crash the party, and Benvolio wants Romeo to check out other girls. I kind of went out of order here, but you also see before that, and I'm sorry this is a little out of order, but um, at the beginning of the scene, Count Paris asks Lord Capulet if he can marry Juliet. Capulet would like Paris to wait at least two years. Capulet agrees to let Paris marry Juliet if he woos her and wins her compliance. Capulet suggests that Paris go to his party tonight and look at other women. So we know that County Paris and um, Romeo and likely Juliet and Rosaline are all going to be at this party tonight. And it's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens. All right, well, thank you guys for watching, and keep posted for an upcoming video on Act 1, Scene 3. I hope you find this helpful, and go ahead and check out DevotedScholar.com for additional resources and assignments. Thanks so much.